134 starters, no set finish line, a race that can last for days and only one finisher. Welcome to the weird and wonderful world of Backyard Ultras. The race comes from the twisted mind of Lazarus Lake, the man behind the legendary Barkley Marathon. And the rules are simple. You must run 4.167 miles every hour on the hour. If you don't finish that loop, or if you fail to start the next one, you are out. Last one standing is the winner. Everyone else is a DNF. So the running channel has got together a few sacrifice, uh, I mean, absolute legends, <laughs> to have a little go at this wonderful race. Now we've all predicted how many laps we think we're going to do, but quick, pause this video and have a guess in the comments what you think we're going to manage. My money's on you, Mo. First ultra. Go on. So we've got an hour before we need to be back. Yeah. Right here. As the clock struck midday, we started our first lap with no real idea how long we would last. I'm quite excited actually. Dog! This is going to be our first official, well my first ever actually, ultra. Okay, Angus is actually <laughs> running with the camera, which is hilarious. We have to um, think of a handicap to keep Angus with us, so. Yeah, otherwise you'd be right there. What's super nice is we're all together for our first lap, at least. Okay. I am putting my money on lap two becoming the competitive one though. Maybe. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Mo. <laughs> so we are coming to the end of lap one. Mo, thoughts? That was all right. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. I mean, I thought it was going to be uh, easier than that, but <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I did too. It's okay. We're almost there. The thing that kind of blows my mind is we are, what, three miles into a race and we're walking. Yeah. It just seems quite unnatural. But this is the wonderful tactics of doing these kind of races. We oh, just have to well. think things through. So it says we've got about 15 minutes before we are out. I need to go to the toilet and get some pretzels. <laughs> and then pretzels. we'll get going again. Coffee. I need everything. <laughs> Lab one, done. Um, when do we go again? When do we go again? When do we go again? In, in about, about 20, 12 minutes time. Yeah, about 12 minutes time. 12 minutes is not enough time to really prep yourself for the next one, especially like three or four or five or six laps in. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy some food. It's just under three minutes to go until lap two. I don't know where the boys are. I am such a panicker that I'm like, right, I must be on time. I must be here ready. I think they're probably still at the car eating. I've been here. I've been studying for the last four minutes. I think Angus has had a Red Bull. What? How did... No. No. How did you know? <laughs> you joined me on lap two at the same spot where I came on on lap one and said how wonderful it was to have all my friends around me. Look at all my friends. They've ditched me. We're about halfway through lap two. Feeling great. I think I might have come up with a good strategy. I'm basically just run walking it. So the majority of this opening laps, I'm taking it a walk because 4.1 miles, got an hour, should be able to do that with a little bit of running very easily with sort of five minutes to spare. For the first 20 miles, shouldn't really need much in terms of the aid station. Bit of water, bit of fuel, keep on trusting. I'm definitely not alone. There are a fairly large amount of people doing the exact same thing. And my greatest fear of this race is that I will be timed out while I'm having a poo. Literally, you're sat on the toilet and the whistle goes telling you you've got a minute. Nasty way to go. Two, done. Lap number three coming to an end. This lap we decided to go a little bit faster. Something that's more like, I think like comfortable and better running efficiency wise. And I'm feeling better at the end of this lap, I think, than the previous ones. I'm feeling better, yeah, for sure. It feels a lot less pressure and bounce on my knees and my ankles and my ligaments. So I think the approach is run most of it at a moderate conservative pace and then just have a bit more chill time. But we're gonna see what it's like to just chill for 20 or so minutes now and see if that kind of gets us out of the zone. I've got 18 minutes. Oh, dude, it's beautiful. So much time. Just back from lap three. I'm gonna have something to eat. I'm gonna graze. My tactic for food is grazing so little and often. So at the end of every lap, I just have something to eat, so I'm going to have a cheese sandwich. It's just starting to get a little bit cold, but it's absolutely fine. My body feels fine. I'm loving the eating. I just I haven't stopped eating every single lap. But yeah, we're good, we're good. I'm going to 
mostly walk this one. I don't want to absolutely, you know, go for it every lap, which I haven't been doing anyway. Turns out I'm not a massive fan of this strategy. I'm a faffa. I don't need to be this stressed about how much time I'm going to have when I get in and will I make it in time before the cutoff or have I completely messed up? So we're still going strong. We just hit the half marathon point. Stoked. <laughs> and it don't feel like a half marathon at all. Nothing so honestly, like I've never eaten so much on a half. <laughs> One. And two, my legs just feel good for now. Another one in a can. This is the great thing about trail and ultra running. It's a lot about the eating. Mm. We've got custard donuts now. We are 16, 17 miles in, I think. Cheers. Cheers. Miss Mungie run to Paris. Mm -hmm. 10 seconds! It's like half past four. So that makes it lap five, I think. Math. Here's a tip for any women who are thinking of doing this race format. Uh, if, like me, the race day ends up falling on your period, I would highly recommend wearing uh, period pants um, because it means that you don't have to have the added worry of admin in your short amount of turnaround time of having to change tampons, etc. Plus we're in a forest, plus we're in Portaloos, so sanitary. <laughs> We've reached delirium. Says you've gone missing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lovely. We've got 19 minutes. <laughs> you all right? A crampy. Oh no. We head George time now. The sun is close to setting. Moving into lap number six. We've been on our feet for about five hours now, so go me. I'm just gonna keep sticking to that original plan of go till you get timed out. It might be this lap. This race format is so savage because no matter how well you do, <laughs> you walk away with a DNF, unless you are the one person who can complete one more lap than anyone else. We are now getting very close to dark. And I thought I'd run you through what is the world record for this kind of race. So remember, 4.16 miles every hour on the hour. The record is 101 laps. 101 laps and that was done by two Belgian runners and they both agreed to uh, to pull out together to stop at that point but that meant because there can only be one winner in a backyard ultra there was no winners so as long as there is one person to start a lap and to attempt it there is a winner but if there are no people on that start line then there's no winner so they even though they broke the road record of 420 miles, there was no, no prize for them. Just a big old DNF. One of my best friends, Eric, puts on this event and uh, he knew we were filming this video and decided it would be a great idea to give me this as my race number. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> We're starting the rave about 11 o'clock tonight, oh, I think. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just had a little vomit, so that's nice. 54 minutes. Just coming into the finish. Thank you. Oh, God. I finally caught up with my friends. How are you finding it? Good, really, really good. I mean, this is the lap where we touch marathon distance. So once we touch that distance, that's going to be the furthest I've ever run. Ah! So exciting times. <laughs> I remember I was with you when you ran the furthest you'd ever run. So yes! I'd, I'd like to keep you, I mean, I'd like you to keep me company oh. for this one. Oh. <laughs> and if you haven't seen that video. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and we've just ticked over to the marathon distance. And tactics are definitely coming into play. So I, I got into the finish area with about six minutes to spare. I needed to get another layer, have a poo, eat some food and have a drink. And I basically had to pick 
two of the four to do. James had to decide between lights with a GoPro or a poo last lap. He, chained, he chose the latter. This is officially the longest distance I've ever run in my life. So every step from now just feels like a new PB. Oh, okay, that's 44K. No idea. How's it going? Chugging away. Just gonna wait on the others. I think their approach is now to just not stop as much. And I think that's gonna be my approach. Once you sat down, it's very difficult to get back up. And I don't wanna get back up right now. Yes. yes. Happy Ooh. waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> the three minutes to go whistle's just gone. Oh. <sighs> This is the end. <sighs> Probably about ready for it to be the end, to be fair. And I came here and did what I came to do, which is what I predicted. So I'm actually dead chuffed with myself for knowing my current limits and levels. I think I got like a, another lap in me. <laughs> literally just coming into camp so like two three minutes over oh thank you hello oh, for me oh, there we go all right done yeah, that's, nice. that's the dnf box chunky tree for you chunky oh tree there we go that's for you little oh. dnf tag oh and, amazing uh, yeah that should if you plant that nicely it should last about 300 years Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Onto lap eight, which puts the Ultra in Backyard Ultra, as we've ticked over 50k now. And uh, surprisingly not feeling too bad. I uh, definitely starting to tire a bit. Now that it's dark, the concentration levels have to be a lot higher, which I'm struggling with. I didn't see Anna at the last um, start finish, so I'm hoping she's okay. Having run 50k, you know, only a week before this, my uh, legs are starting to feel it, but I reckon I got another lap or two in me. Yeah. Two minutes. Oh, Hang on. Yeah. The food is so good. You've got to make a decision. Are you going to die out there or are you going to die in camp? I'm, I've already died in here. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. One minute, guys. Hello, mate. Yes. Lap number nine. Here we go. Mo, how are you feeling? I've got triggers and shippers in my mouth. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm good. I'm too busy touching the rainbow. <laughs> Definitely starting to feel the pain <laughs> time. I told James I'm going to beat him, him so I can't tap <laughs> out before him. <laughs> so this is how we just keep going until this is Monday morning and we're still going because we're stubborn. Mine is really, really telling me to quit right now, but I'm just going to go as strong as I can until I can't anymore. I'm one of two remaining and I didn't think I'd get here to be fair. I really thought Angus and Anna would be way ahead of me. My watch has just ticked over to 37 miles. I've got about seven minutes before I have timed out. And uh, safe to say, the finish line is nowhere near and it's definitely not inside. Which is tough, if I'm honest. I love ultras. They are tough. They are beautiful. And they are hard. Mac. Faint light. That's the campsite. That's the last minute. Whistle. Here it comes. Yes, dude. You got 30 seconds. Go, James, go. Go, James, go! Oh, there's the bell. We're going for lap numero 10. Let's go. I think I'm the last one standing, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't see James come in, so I think I'm the last one standing. So we'll hope for the best. But what I do have is a speaker. Happy, happy days. Thank you, guys. Dude, the bell's literally just gone. Uh, there's the start line. 
God, this race series is brutal. Backyards are not for playing in. No, I think it's just hit it off. Good. Yeah? Good. He's gonna get in one last lap. Nice. I'm really pleased for him. Oh, oh I didn't even hear this. <laughs> didn't quite make the double figures. No. Okay to it. Well, it means next time you'll have to. Uh... Next time I'll be stood here with you, <laughs> cheering people on. Uh, we done well though. That was evil. You're welcome. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All oh, right then. Check your uh, tag in the. Uh... The ding dong? That's, I keep you. saying the wrong words. The ding dong is the right word. <laughs> oh, yeah, so there we go. Congratulations. Thank you. You've done much. amazing. No, this has been amazing, honestly. First ultra! First ultra. Yeah! Especially look at me. I'm so proud. Welcome I mean, to the dark side. Yeah, You'll right, never so. want to go back. <laughs> I've just enjoyed the amount of food I've consumed today. That's that's really what's winning me over right now. Yeah. Not how my legs feel in, but how my stomach feels just satisfied. So congratulations. As the ultra expert at TLC, this is not not a great moment, but I am very proud of what Mo has achieved today. Mo lost the longest, he did an extra lap on me. So how many kilometers slash miles did you end up doing? So 65, basically, just under 65 kilometers overall. Don't know what that is in miles, but uh, it feels surreal. To beat James. <laughs> <laughs> but, and we also have the momentum that you get given for your glorious DNF. Uh, so, as we said in the video, nobody gets, uh, nobody wins unless there is one person still stood standing. Everybody else is a DNF, which is did not finish. That's a wrap. <laughs>